There is no necessary conflict between evolution and theism. Okay, okay. Wait, wait. Before I let you listen to this complete false prophet, heretic, liar, let me, can I just read this? Something out of the book of Genesis. This is Genesis chapter 3. And look, I'm just going to explain this very simply. The Bible makes it clear in Genesis chapter 1 that God created the heavens and the earth. Obviously, you already know what this guy's going to say is a lie because he opens his mouth. But let me just read to you what this says in verse 1 of chapter 3 of Genesis. It says, now the serpent, this is talking about Satan, was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, has God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Notice two tactics that the enemy uses from the very beginning. And he still uses these tactics today. The first thing is he casts dispersion upon the word of God by asking a very simple question, hath God actually said this? Then when he asks the question, he actually bases the question on a false premise by asking a question concerning God or concerning something God didn't actually say. God didn't say you can't eat of every tree. As a matter of fact, he said eat of every tree except one. Listen to what Anley Stanley is about to say because he uses the same kind of satanic tactic. And if you listen closely, you'll find out that he's not only a bigot, but he's also a racist. Take a listen to what he says here. Because evolution is a means. Theism says there was an agent. There, I have one high school biology teacher, Christian, here. It's like, <laughs> please, would somebody make this clear? I know this is... The guy that's clapping is probably a plant from Satan, but that's a whole other issue. <laughs> Let's carry on. It's like really important because people come home, kids come home from biology class, high school, like, well, you know, without evolution, no, we don't believe in evolution. We believe in creation. Wait, 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 wait. Hey, hang on. This is very important. The Genesis account of creation, the point of that isn't here's how God did it. The point of that is that God did it. Okay, first of all, he's a liar because if the point of it was not how God did it, then God would not have talked about the seven days of creation, including the resting day. It was the precisely the fact that God did it, and it goes on to talk about how he did it. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Then he starts the discussion of how God did it, because in verse 2 it says, and the earth was without form and void. So verse 1 says that God created all the raw material, and starting verse 2, we begin to get a description of God powerfully and artistically forming the raw material that he actually created. This is not a description of evolution. Rather, this is a description of the re most remarkable and absolutely powerful creation account ever read about. God's incredible. And this guy is about to take that away from the Lord, at least in the minds of the people that are watching him. He's a liar and a deceiver. And the reason we know that is because it stood in stark contrast to the Sumerian and the Babylonian and the Canaanite and the Egyptian creation myths. Do, do you understand that? He says it stood in stark contrast to those myths. So automatically he is going to start, literally, this is no joke, he's going to start comparing the literal creation account of God to myths that existed in pagan cultures. And he's going to take an argument that is terrible based on a false satanic premise and actually try to make a convincing statement that God could have used evolution, which is absurd. It's obscene. It's like saying God's love is reckless. It's a lie. God's love is calculated. And God's creation account and God's creation was calculated. And in all of their myth, the gods just sort of appeared magically out of nowhere, or they created themselves, or they created each other. And then Yahweh says, hang on, uh-uh, I created it all out of nothing. I didn't use body parts, okay? I didn't, you know, split, you know, Tiamat in half, and their lower half became the earth, and the upper half became the heavens. I mean, that's foolishness. There's one God, I'm God, I did it. That's the point of the Genesis creation count. Sounds pretty good so far, doesn't it? Without the twistings, if you don't take those into account, but look at how badly downhill he's about to go. This is evil. Now, this is important. God 
as a heavenly father does something for you and does something for every generation from the beginning that we should be so grateful for. And if you're a parent, you do this as well. You know what God does? God accommodates to our capacity. God accommodates to our capacity. Where do babies come from? It depends on who's asking. By the way, God does not accommodate our capacity. God raises the functional level of our capacity, okay? He's wrong again. God makes us smarter. He doesn't, he doesn't cater down to our lack of intellectual capacity or to our lack of ability to be able to develop understanding. God speaks to it and raises it, okay? So to make the implication he's about to make is completely evil. It's a straight-out deception tactic. Look what he says doesn't it? And you didn't lie to your five-year-old when she asked, and you didn't lie to your 15-year-old when he asked, and when a high school biology student studies reproductive, you know, science, the teacher isn't lying. You, we never lie. We change the answer. Why? Because we're lying? No, because we're accommodating to a person's capacity. I don't know about you, but I don't change the answer. I, I may change the presentation in that there are certain things that are not appropriate for my child of tender age, but I do not lie to the child. He is talking about lying to the child. And where he's about to go with this is completely broken. Look what he says. So come on, what was the capacity of ancient, 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 ancient slave culture Hebrews? It, was there any way in the world God could explain to them how he did it? No. Ancient, 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 ancient slave culture Hebrews implying that they're unintelligent, implying that they're too stupid to understand the issues related to creation. He is a nut. He's also, by the way, a bigot and a bit of a racist because for him to apply, imply that in ancient Hebrew, the same Hebrews that probably built the pyramids, the pyramids that we still can't figure out how to create today, it's beyond their capacity to be able to understand the mechanics created by the scientific constructs of God's creation? That's a lie. He's a false teacher. He does not believe that the word of God is true, and I'm gonna prove it. Look at this next clip. We never even understood where this came from. It was a house of cards. So all someone had to do was come along and pull away a couple of the pieces, a couple of the foundational pieces, and suddenly the whole thing comes tumbling down. And so we went off to college. And we discovered that even though it was sacred, it wasn't scientific. And even though, you know, it was something to appreciate, it wasn't necessarily something that was factual. And even though there were stories in here that were inspirational, they weren't necessarily true. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance, but now he commands all people everywhere, not simply here in Athens and not back home in Judea. He commands all people everywhere to repent. We see this word in church is like, oh yeah, now I'm supposed to give up my sin and walk away. He's not talking about sin. He's never mentioned sin. This isn't about sin. God's word <laughs> is not true. That's what he said. And he said that repentance has nothing to do with sin. That is a heretic, folks. I bring this up because Satan is good at casting dispersion upon the word of God. Here's the summary of the matter, everybody. Check everything closely with the word of God. The word of God is true, and man is a liar. We are living in a world today, especially in the last days, where people take the word of God and they completely throw it away. And even in some cases, like the one of this heretic, manipulate it in order to come to a satanic conclusion. It's sad. Folks, keep your head up. Pay attention to what the Word of God says. It will transform your life. Stick to it, not the opinions of man. God bless you.